Hi, I'm John Fredrickson and welcome to the ISTDP Institute. In our earlier videos on anxiety, we showed you how to assess and regulate anxiety. However, sometimes anxiety regulation techniques do not work. Why? Sometimes the patient uses defenses or has ego deficits that will perpetuate the anxiety. You see, anxiety, once triggered by a feeling, can be perpetuated by ego deficits or regressive defenses. That's why we have to differentiate the causes of anxiety, unconscious feeling, from the perpetuators of anxiety, regressive defenses and ego deficits. When anxiety regulation does not work, we need to identify and restructure the defenses and ego deficits that perpetuate the anxiety and prevent anxiety regulation. Once we do that, we can regulate the anxiety triggered by feelings. Suppose a patient feels anger towards his critical father. And the therapist asks, so how do you experience this anger towards your father? I think I wasn't a very good son to him. I was just such a stupid idiot. I just uh, hate myself. Now, this is an identification with a critical father. Rather than be angry with his critical father, he identifies with his father and criticizes himself. This defense of self-attack represses the anger, but at a terrible price. The patient feels more anxious, not realizing he attacks himself. The anxiety in relation to these identifications has been called superego anxiety. See, if this patient attacks and criticizes himself, on some level, he's going to be afraid of an attacker all day long, not realizing he's attacking himself. When self-criticism and self-attack become a habit, the patient feels anxious as if someone else is attacking him, but he doesn't see how he attacks himself. Anxiety regulation doesn't work when the defense of self-attack perpetuates the anxiety. Interrupt and point out self-attacking statements in a compassionate, non-judgmental way. Patient, I feel like just a total failure. Therapist, wow, did you see what just happened? Interrupting the defense. Patient, no, what? Therapist, do you notice how there's a critical mechanism in your mind that comes in here and puts you down? When this critical system in your mind comes up, does it make you depressed? Is it hurting you, do you think? Interrupt the patient's self-attacks right away. Once the patient can observe and stop his self-attacks, his anxiety will drop. Then you can explore the feeling that he wards off through self-attack. Another defense that can prevent anxiety regulation is projection. For instance, if I was angry at you and judge myself for being angry, I might project that you're angry at me. Or I might project that you're judging me. Now I experience you as a judge. I'll be afraid of you. That's what we call projective anxiety. Anxiety in relation to a projection I put on you. As long as I'm projecting on you, I'll be chronically anxious. Thus, you won't be able to regulate my anxiety. You'll have to restructure my projection first. Once I can differentiate you from my projection, I'll be able to trust you and let you regulate my anxiety. If you go to my YouTube video on projection, you'll learn how to deal with three kinds of projection. So, when you aren't able to regulate a patient's anxiety, assess which defenses are perpetuating the anxiety. Is the patient attacking himself? Is he projecting onto you? Is he failing to differentiate current experience from a trauma in the past? Once you find the defense that perpetuates his anxiety, restructure that defense then you'll be able to regulate the patient's anxiety. Remember, if he projects onto you, you won't be able to regulate his anxiety. For more information on the ways defenses can prevent anxiety regulation, you might want to read my book, Co-Creating Change. It offers numerous examples of how to assess and regulate anxiety, as well as how to address defenses that prevent anxiety regulation. You can find it at istdpinstitute.com or at amazon.com. Until next time, I'm John Fredrickson, and thanks again for visiting us at the ISTDP Institute.